This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I wanted to read an excerpt out of an interview uh, posted on Guns and Butter with Michael Steinbacher. Now, if you don't know who Michael Steinbacher is, uh, he was he was the first influence I had on Electric Universe geology, and uh, he's since passed on. And uh, I just want to make sure that he's remembered. And uh, there was a question that Tony Rango asked. And I'll post the full uh, transcript link in the description. But what Tony asked was, when you say EU or Electric Universe, what is that and where did you discover it? And Michael Steinbacher replied, it's an offshoot of what Velikovsky started and people who came before Dr. Velikovsky, who wrote Worlds in Collision, were already looking at the cosmos as being electrical. Dr. Velikovsky took that and ran with it. He had assistance. Ralph Jurgens was a main source of information for Dr. Velikovsky. Dr. C.J. Ransom, who has a PhD in plasma physics, another source of information, was invaluable. They helped understand the cosmos in an electrical sense more and more as time progressed, although Velikovsky was really a groundbreaker. There's a link website, the V Archive, V for Velikovsky, archive.org, and it has Velikovsky's correspondence with Einstein and it all revolves around electromagnetism and what role it plays in the solar system. And Velikovsky is just putting his cards on the table, and he comes out smelling like a rose, and Einstein not so much. So this was the beginning of EU the way I see EU. Walt Thornhill went to visit Velikovsky in Princeton. I might have passed him on the streets of Princeton. I was there at the time working in Trenton at the newspaper, so I was hanging out in Princeton. It was the cool place to be and he looked at the catastrophic and the plasma physics end of things and started putting things together. And then others joined in, Dave Talbot, many others, C.J. Ransom especially, Dr. Don Scott, Mel Acheson started looking at things from a different starting point, and they all brought different tools with them. Mel being an astronomer, Dr. Scott being an electrical engineering professor, so all these different talents looking at a problem and trying to figure it out, and it's ongoing. It probably won't ever stop. It'll probably keep changing and morphing, and what we believe today probably will be different than what we believe five years from now. I should be getting a smile from Mel, having just said that now. But yeah, things change. If you don't change, you're probably doing something wrong, and you have to keep challenging yourself. So that's not really an answer to your question, but EU grew out of crazy descriptions from our ancestors concerning these catastrophes and only electricity could really explain what was going on. And then it becomes really simple. You have aurora-like phenomena taking place that mainstream geologists and scientists would never consider as part of this process. It's just not part of their package, where now we can look at it in a different way. We can have catastrophes. We can have plasma physics affecting the catastrophes. And then what are the implications of all this? That's your incredibly long answer for what is EU. That's the little portion I wanted to share from this transcript. It's fairly long. It's a really good read, and I believe the interview is also posted online somewhere. Anyhow, Michael Steinbacher, um, man, maybe you can hear me somewhere out there. Uh, I know you're not with us in person today, but you've changed my life, man. Um, the work that you and, and uh, Billy Overton did, Billy Overton doing a lot of the experiments that I saw years ago, uh, inspired me to do my own experiments inspired me to go out and uh, look at these things for myself, um, troll Google Earth, as Neil Thompson would say, and, uh, you know, as I said in my video I dedicated to Michael yesterday, and if, if you start to look at these things and really compare all things with an open mind, it starts to make sense, and all of the things that are confusing and um, debatable, they start to make sense, and nobody can see it for you. No one can tell you how to see it or what to see. Just like here in Texas, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So uh, I'm not calling you a horse, <laughs> but uh, I hope I hope you'll drink. Well, don't drink, drink.